Hey ladies and gentlemen, thank you for clicking this video. It's time for another uh, Kingdom Prosperity session. Uh, I'm your host Brian and this is You Are on the Brian T. Murray YouTube channel. Um, we have a good uh, Kingdom Prosperity session today. We're coming from Exodus chapter 33. We have a short one, a good one, but a short one. We're covering, uh, we're covering uh, verses 12 to 23. We're covering verses 12 to 23. And the name of this one is uh, Adult Children Should Get to Know Their Fathers. Adult Children Should Get to Know Their Fathers. Yes, it is a part of your prosperity. Adult Children Should Get to Know Your Fathers. All right. Uh, as you know, those that follow me know that we always start out with opening prayer. So let's get into that now. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this precious opportunity, Lord, for us to come together, Lord, to, to, to touch and, and agree, Father. Uh, we, we thank you for this path you have chosen for us to go down today, Father. It, it gives us the opportunity to, to reflect and, and to de detect things uh, 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 that, that, that could be done, that should, should have been, been done on, on, on whoever's part, Lord. We, we thank you and we bless you, Lord, for just the opportunity to have this dialogue, which we hope that someday it will turn into a dialogue, Father. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Here we are. Exodus 33, starting in verse 12. Starting in verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou saith unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, but also thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Amen. Amen. I find that to be... Um... Moses probably thought that he was being basic, but I find it to be very brilliant. I find it to be very brilliant. We have Moses who have been used by, by God to bring the plagues on to Egypt. And even into this point of Exodus chapter 33, he is basically saying, I don't know you. Give me the opportunity to get to know who you are. Yet, the contemporary believer can have one trial, a half of a tribulation, and then boast that they know God. If anybody outside of Jesus had an opportunity to say, I know God, it was Moses. And he told the truth. I don't know you. Give me an opportunity to know who you are. You're giving me commandments. We're dealing with a stick, stiff necked people. But give me the opportunity to know who you are. Why? So this madness that we go through every day will start to make sense. This is why adult children need to know their father now there's someone watching this and they said well I know my, my, my father if, if you understand what's being said in verse 13 what Moses is talking about is purpose boy let, let me let me no one can really get to know themselves until they know their parents in particular their fathers why because the mother is properly re rewarded in, in, in today's society 
you will start thinking about mother mother days mother's days plans five weeks before it comes when father's day come it will be five minutes until sunset the day of that you realize oh today's father's day that that's how, how our, our society is set up we celebrate mothers because the mother is uh, the nurturer and she is our first teacher for better or for worse she is our first teacher that's fine but the seed comes from the father this word father is also used uh, used in the Bible. Uh, the word is used and it's called progenitor. Progenitor. It's basically a, another word of, for, for, for father. It means to produce seed. It means upholder. It means a, 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 a abstainer. Uh, the one who holds everything in place. Purpose. So we have the father, we have a society where we think fathers are optional. If you think fathers are optional, you're, you're essentially saying men are, are optional. But Moses, who really only knew his grandfather, for, for the most part, who, who was also Pharaoh. But you're saying God is our father. Give me this opportunity to know who you are. Give me this. Uh, it's because I have present day frustrations. Present day frustrations. Every day is the same. And I want to know where my life is going. I want to sneak peek on what I'm about because each child is there it is a derivative of uh, their uh, parents each child is a derivative of their parents meaning you you were getting your 30s 40s and 50s and then things will begin to make sense once you realize who you come from it will start to make sense And then those around you be like, yeah, that's 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 showing up so and so's child. It begins to make sense. That's why we need to know our origins. As a reference, as a reference, I I, I was watching this one show, and, and this uh, main character lost his memory, and. Um, he made some very interesting points. He said, well, if I'm so loved, how come my family is not out here looking for me? <laughs> the, the truth was they didn't know he, he was alive. So where is my family? Why should I find out where I come from, where I'm comfortable right where I am? This is why, purpose. We all have a clock to our lives. We all have a clock to our lives. You're going to regret the fact that you had time and you didn't, number one, find out what your purpose was and complete its task. You didn't find out what your, 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 your purpose was or is. And two, you, you didn't complete its task. That's a what if you don't want to deal with. I like what, 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 what Kenneth Copeland said, who, 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 be in, who will, will be in, in, in the DMV next month. He says, uh, until you find out, he says, your money is where your purpose is. Your money is where your purpose is. Meaning, you can work, you can make a living, but whatever God created you to do you best to you, you best know once you get into into the will of God and you get into your sweet spot in life and purpose that's where the real money is yeah God God may have you somewhere 
around the world and you're like why why would i do that it, you won't figure it out until after you get it get into it you submit and you get into it and once you get into it you're like oh oh this makes sense now right life is not going to make sense to you while you're on the sideline or doing something else it's not going to make sense to you that's why it's good as pastor jenkins always say it's good to be right on main street of god's will he wants to be right in the center of god's will amen and verse 14 and he said my presence shall go with thee and i will give thee rest and he said unto him if thou presence go not with me carry us not up hence for in verse 16 for wherein it shall be known here that i and thy people have found grace in thy sight it is not in that thou goest with us so so shall we be separated i and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth and the lord said unto moses i will do this thing also thou hast spoken. this this is life begins to open up once you begin to ask the right questions life will begin to open up once you begin to ask the right questions he asks I want to get to know you what do I have to do to get to know you <laughs> uh, Lord I want to get to know you because you can go through the motions of life all you want all the uh, time and it won't do you much much good until you get to a why and a purpose I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight and I know thee by name and he said I beseech thee show me thy glory show me thy, thy glory and he said I will make all my goodness to pass before thee before a father and, 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 and I remember years ago Dr. Miles Monroe said this he said before a father can tell his children who they are he must first tell them who he is so you can see the congruency before you tell your children who they are you have to first tell them who who you are so you can see the congruency so it can begin to make sense so it, it can make sense I will make in verse 19 I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on him I will show mercy and he said thou cannot see my face for there shall no man see me and live and the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. But my face shall not be seen amen the, all the joy of a father going through this process of revealing to his children who he, who he is now in, in the title I, I know adult children why is because now, number one uh, and I, I, I'll get him get into more of this later children 
as far as their as far as minors you are just mom and dad you are you are you are just a sponsor you are as one one comedian said you are a uh, a non-profit organization <laughs> being a parent you you are a non-profit organization you're doing good you're feeding the children literally and and as if it's like you get nothing out of it other than the fact that you're you're doing it with God who is Abba Father and with today's fathers the joy of doing something different and being transparent uh, and being forthcoming and sharing on who he is this is how we got here this is who I am here are my influences here were my successes here are my failures so forth so on and that when you begin to see that you are a derivative of your father uh, everyone who says I'm nothing like him they are the main ones that are uh, very similar to him okay everyone comes comes from somewhere everyone comes from somewhere years ago I was in a discipleship program I I, I didn't know it, it, it was a discipleship program that this one particular session we, we had we had a, a discussion on why um, uh, about reconciling with our, our, our parents and uh, one guy was like why is this even important I have my job I have my sons you know why do I got to go go through so I'm, I'm watching all this and then at the very end I, I, I shared my uh, input and, and I can't remember exactly what I said I, I said this maybe uh, uh, four or five years ago I said it, it's, it's basically it is the best way to find out who you are it's the best way to find out who you are it's because if you think your life is simply going to work paying bills uh, going going to the movies on, on the weekend that's not who you are that's what you do that's not who you are everyone comes from somewhere you have got to take consistent time out to find out where you come from He's uh, this particular the guy is very close to his mother, and, and, and to me that that doesn't that that's not the same. <laughs> your mother and your father are two different individuals. That that's why God saw fit to, to give you both. And what um, people do that is harmful to, to to them, they take their mother's word for for everything. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You you cannot take your mother's word. You have got to find out as an adult what's what. No, your 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 parents' relationship that's their relationship. You're not a part of that. You're not a, a part of that. What what you hear so often with adult children is that they have judged their parents through through the eyes of them being a child they have judged their parents through the eyes of them being a child so uh, the main opinions they had when, when, when they was 12 they have essentially the same opinions if not similar uh, at, at the age of 22 32 and I'm like wait a minute no no that lets us know number one you need therapy <laughs> <laughs> because you have judged your, your your parents as no number one you're better than them no no you are the de derivative you're <laughs> you you are the de derivative no they came before you no you are their offspring 
The present generation all, always think they are the answer. No, you're a part of the answer. You're a part of the answer, but you're not the answer. And, and they also think life began with them. Like, whatever they, they're going through, it's like, well, that's not the first time that has happened. <laughs> so uh, let's cut down on on the tears. <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> it has happened before. It has happened before you. It has happened to, to more to other people other than you, and it will keep happening. You are not the centerpiece of this era. Family is like links in a chain. God never intended us to recreate the... God never intended each generation to recreate the wheel. Families that have family wealth are the ones that have properly linked their generations together. I am astonished by adult children who are professionals, who are celebrities, and when, when you find out more about them, their parents is from first generation wealth. Like their parents created the wealth. I'm like, uh huh. So you famous and you created your, your, your way, bless God, okay. But at the same time, uh, understand your family helped create those opportunities. We, we see this more so in uh, sports. Children of former professional athletes, they know exactly to move their children through this process with, with, with adequacy and accuracy. Meaning, they know to hire the nutritionist and, and and the quarterback coach and and, and and professional trainers and everything. But when you're in the hood and, and, and your parents worked in the post office, you don't know anything about this. So your learning curve is much higher. Where when 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 you 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 come from professional athlete uh, uh, background yeah they, they, they can move you through life a little better this is so important to find out who your father is in particular because your purpose is tied into that because once you hear his story from his mouth your story will begin to make a little bit more sense. And this is what Moses is asking for. Let me see your glory. And God grants his request. So that I will pass by you. And I will put you in a safe place in a cliff of a rock. And I will cover you with my hand while I pass. And you will see my, my hand. And I, I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. This, this event is one of the most mysterious e events in the uh, Bible, and, and I thoroughly do enjoy the, the, the mysterious events in uh, the Bible. I, I, I really do. This is one of the events where, where biblical scholars have said that this is where God showed Moses the origin of uh, life, if you will, the origin of life, and where things have been, where it is, and where it's going, because we see Moses is the author of the first five books of the uh, Bible. Moses was writing Genesis even before Moses was uh, born, if you will. So where does he get this uh, 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 accurate information from? No one else but God. The first two chapters, there, there, there's no one up there, there's no one there but God. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I I I I only told my uh, brother that this uh, story, and that is uh, what what was ten years ago. The moment I was watching um, the show How I Met at Your Mother. I, I, I just started getting in, in, into the show. I didn't understand all that, that that was happening, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But there was this one episode that hit me like a rock. It was the episode where Barney had the suspicious suspicion that Bob Barker from The Price is Right was his father. <laughs> it, it, it sounds crazy, right? He had the suspicion that Bob Barker from The Price is Right was his father. Now, Bob, Bob, Bob Barker has, has since been de deceased, I, 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 I believe. It, it, is Bob Barker still alive? Let's take a look. It, 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 it doesn't matter, but since I'm saying it, you might as well just look. Yep, he's he's still alive. <laughs> he is ninety-seven years old. He is ninety-seven years old. Wow, he is still alive. <laughs> the number one question is: People also ask, "Is Bob Barker still alive?" The answer is yes. <laughs> As of September twenty twenty-one, ninety-seven years old. Mm. Okay, so I'm I'm watching this. And the episode is hilarious. However, through all that laughter, it's like you you begin to think about your father, and it's like. And I, the time that I was going through, I was working a lot, making no money. I needed support in every way, shape, or form. I didn't have that support. I didn't have that support that, that I needed. I understand. Uh, I, 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 I'm a man that, that this is what, you know, you know, you know, shoulders is made for uh, pressure. I get it. But it, it's like I just needed some kind of direction, man. And this was like 10 years ago, man. And I mean, everything was just crazy. Nothing was making sense. It's like you're going through the same thing every day, but yet it doesn't make sense. Like, is this what God made me to be? Like, what's happening? I don't, I'm not getting it. Like, what's, what's happening? And, and life was so intense. I wanted, to, I wanted to quit my job every day. I thought I, I, I was going to get fired every other day. I mean, just just nonsense, just just zero guidance. But that 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 episode, man, it, it it just it just did something to me. It just did something to me. So when when I got around to telling my old brother, I was like, and, and what I, I I think what what really got into it was. Uh, my, my younger cousin was, was a freshman at um, George Washington University and when, when I saw him I was like wow you know hey what, what's going on he was like oh yeah wow how, how are you whatever we, we, we caught up and, and we, we talked for like maybe three minutes what have you and, and, and I walked away from, from that from that interaction and I was like he has a lot of support he has a lot of support. He has to do his, his thing. He got to execute the things he got got to do in in life. He uh, he he got to do well in school and go, go to class and do well and, and all this blah 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 blah. But you you can just feel the support that he received when I was his age. There was none of that. 
there was none of that. And and this is what um we tend to do in particular to our boys. We tend to just throw them out in the world and figure it out. Which is nothing wrong with that. That that's actually preferable. But at the same time, for him to go for years in succession without adequate support, that's where I have a problem with it. It's like, yo, <laughs> yo. I was broke for years and I didn't know that that was normal. I just, it was just added pressure. Like I'm doing something wrong. Why is I go to work every single day and work, you know, eight to 12 hours a, 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 a day and even coming in on Sundays and I have no money to eat. <laughs> what, what, what is this? What, what is happening? What is happening? Just, I think in 2011, 2010, 2011, I could have used maybe one, one to three good, powerful conversations. And and I'm not talking about sermons. No, no, no. Black people, we love to give folks sermons. Like, shut up. It's no, 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 stop it. We need dialogue. We always want people to be preached at and taught at and all this other stuff. No, no, no. No, it, it's no. I, I, I really could have used some really good, some very powerful conversations there. So here it is 11, 10, 11 years later. Now I create these videos as as future help to someone, as future help. Like, the pain you're going through, the challenges you're facing, those are normal. Those are normal. Don't lose your head. It's all right. But it start. See, the idea of getting to know your father in your 20s is like ludicrous to you. Like, why? It gets more important when you hit your thirties. It gets definitely important when 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 you hit, hit your forties. It becomes imperative once you become a parent because it's not until you. I I, I I've, I've said this to uh, someone and uh, they they flat out told me that's not uh, true. It, I said, you don't appreciate your parents as parents until you become a parent. And the person who told me that, that that's not true was not a parent. <laughs> yeah, 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 You don't appreciate your mother until you become a mother. You don't appreciate your father until you become a father. Because things just go to, to a next dimension for you. That's when you realize, so hey, has it always been this way? Like, ah, for the most part, yes. But no one told you. That's why you you think it, it's this huge outrage. But it's like 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 me being a uh, young work working professional, uh, a younger working professional. It's like. You want to talk uh, talk talk about retirement? I, I, I I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling <laughs> for survival. You you up here talk, talking about retirement? Like what? <laughs> when you got a job and don't don't even know what 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 it is you are, are going to eat every day. <laughs> 
no one is there to tell you that that's normal, especially if, if you're just starting out. That's normal. That's normal. So Moses wanted to understand. Before we go any further, Lord, show me your glory. I want I want to get to know who you are. Because I'm telling you, I'm about uh, to kill some of your, your children. I'm trying to keep you from killing them so, so I can kill them. I just need your help, Lord. I, I, I just I just need your help. So this connects to your pr prosperity is because as I, I was texting uh, Pat Pastor Hennett uh, one time, I, I remember being in business school and uh, members of the Ford family came and talked about how 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 they just kept the family business going like I'm, I, I'm in I'm in I don't know I think that was my freshman year yeah yeah I mean I'm in freshman orientation now you already have this in, in particular as a man you always have you already have this thought in the back of your mind is man I am poor I'm, I'm I, this, this is crazy you watch this, you know, world-known white family that, that has put like 20% of all cars on the uh, streets. Talk about these lessons that their father taught them. And I'm like, I know my parents taught me stuff, but none of it is registering right now where I need it the most. <laughs> What uh, what struggling families do is they 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 believe if they put morality in their children, that's ninety nine percent of the work. And as good as that sounds, that is not true. <laughs> you want your children to, to be moral, responsible human beings, in, in, individuals, citizens. You want them to, to be that. But as I have said on a couple of occasions, I was not prepared for college. I mean, like, I didn't know what to expect. People would say little things, but but it, it, it's like, it's, it, it's like, yo, you're getting ready to get punched in, in the gut in five, four, three, two, one. And then it happened. That's how, how college was for me. It, it was like, wait, how do you grow up in Baltimore and all you do is go to school, go to church and do housework and, and you think you are prepared for life? Like, that's crazy. We were so sheltered, which isn't a bad thing, but not being prepared for life. I mean, that, <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you uh, gotta expose your, your, your children to stuff. You, you can control what they're exposed to, but you gotta expose them to stuff. You just have to. You just have to. My, my, my oldest niece, She just left for college. She grew up in the bedroom that she was an infant in. <laughs> and she's going to school out in California. So, so I bring up, huh, so you have done everything for her in her life. And the next thing is she goes to California by herself. 
You have done everything for her. And she goes to California by see to most women that is exciting. Like woo woo freedom. It's like yeah, men see see things a little different. <laughs> men see things a little different. And this is what I'm talking about about the lack of preparation. It's like what? In this era of of the NFL. We see quarterbacks having instant success. Why? It's because they are being exposed to NFL type offenses and coaching as early as high school. Before this became a norm, we would see a quarterback get drafted and he would have to sit on the bench for like two, three years before he even saw the field. Now, those of us that's old school football, that made sense to us. But when you have the way the rookie pay scale is and free agency, it's like you 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 can't afford for for somebody sitting on your bench for two three years when their when their contract is up and you don't know if they're the greatest thing since since sliced bread or uh, they don't know anything about football. You don't know unless you expose them to an actual game or a few games all this wait and see stuff man is like uh, that's not the answer to everything man that's 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 crazy you 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 gotta there, there has see the silent generation the the, the, the generation who is, who are our grandparents' generation, depending on depending on who you are, they were great on correction and work ethic, but they were horrible at mentorship. Meaning, if you wanted to learn, you had to learn by watching, but they never really put it together on why you should watch. Because that, that was the generation of do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so when you have the baby boomer generation where they, that generation right there is the rebellious generation. Oh no, they, they, they were not thrilled by their parents. They were not thrilled. So they rebelled. That, that, that was the Woodstock generation. The civil rights movement generation, that that, that age of, of where of where uh, we had two decades of just protesting, the sixties and seventies just protesting. They had reasons to protest, but they they protest in more areas than than one, if you will. So when the baby boomer generation gave birth to Generation X, my generation. They told us, get all the education you you uh, can. I'm like, okay. Okay. So school. That's that's the way to do it. Just school. They didn't teach us nothing about financing, debt, none of that. No. <laughs> we have a thirty trillion dollar uh uh um college debt. <laughs> System and this is after buying to excuse certain groups. This this is crazy, man. So each generation have an obligation to link to the next generation. And, and I'm not at all saying everything you have to learn is coming from from a relative. No, wherever quality teaching is. It's there for you. <laughs> it is there for you. Ask questions. Be engaged. Uh, uh, be be interested. Be interesting. Let uh, Moses was. He wanted to know what was the point of all this. Who are you? Who am I? Let's have this conversation, Lord. And God granted his requests. 
God granted his requests. Having enlightened young adults is different because we are in generations where children, today's children, think you are supposed to take care of them forever. <laughs> like, no, I like how Dr. Miles Monroe put it. He said, the husband father is the president. The wife mother is the vice president. She is not your secretary. She is the vice president, which means she gives advice. That's why she's called the vice president. And your children are members of the cabinet. Meaning, as parents, you are supposed to train your children to take over the family business. Well, what is the family business? Before it becomes an actual family business, the family is a business. What if something happened to mom? What if something happened today? Number one, can we eat? <laughs> do we know how to do the chores? Do we know how to fix stuff? Do, do we know how to get stuff fixed? Do we not? Just raising your children to be productive. The baby boomer generation is the first generation that put very little towards their children, but yet they, they had high expectations. They just, this is why children of Generation X and down are angry. Because you taught them nothing. You taught them nothing. And when they don't get the outcomes that, that, that they desire, it's like, well, do you got it yet? God, what? I never knew anything. I never learned anything. No, no. Kevin Samuel said, said, said something very uh, interesting. Uh, the baby boomer ge generation showed you stuff, but they didn't teach you. They showed you stuff, but they didn't teach you. They showed you stuff. Nah, certain things in life got to be taught. And, and, and you cannot say to a child, oh, well, you, you just never showed any interest. They're children. <laughs> the, the children. <laughs> Look at how the unfair qualifications we have put on our children. You, you never showed any interest. You never showed any interest. I'm 15. <laughs> You, all you're doing is trying to find an excuse for you not to do what it is God ha had you to do. Show us the way. Teach us the way. And and when I say things like like that, people all automatically think I, I, I'm talking about church. I'm talking about life. <laughs> I'm talking about life. This is why there's such a lack of prosperity. Why? Because my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Well, who is he condemning in that passage of scripture? He, he He's condemning the priests, the learned men and women, the preacher, the, the, uh, the uh, teacher in the community. You didn't teach them. Therefore, they don't have the favorable outcomes. You taught them nonsense. You, you you taught them churchy things, but you didn't teach them about life. So when they don't gravitate to you in your elder years, you're going to say it's their fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's not it. No. If we want to play the blame game, there's plenty enough blame to go around. Okay. But that's not the point of, of, of this video. The point of, of this video 
is adult children should get to know their fathers because they want to begin to make sense of everything. Let me tell you, when you're in your 20s and 30s, there's a lot of information you are missing. And you need you to stop acting so arrogant, acting like you know it all. The mere fact that I was working hard and not winning at life, <laughs> I was asking my, myself the right question. I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. Because there has got to be an easier way. That doesn't mean cheating. It means it is, it's just got it. No, no, no. There's people further ahead in life. They're doing something different. When people have something you don't have, they mean they know something you don't know. This is why generations need to connect. And in this process, each generation has to respect the other generation. Because my fight isn't necessarily your fight. I, I, I can empathize with you, but my fight is not your fight. Each generation got their own fight. They have their own challenges. So, so it's not one, one answer for all generations. Moses wanted to know and God wanted him to know because let me tell you it, every godly desire you have comes from the Lord so Moses was provoked by God to know more about God amen amen that that desire that curiosity that was put there by God. This desire to be better, to live a better life, and not live from paycheck to to, to, to a paycheck, and and, and and not have to worry about retirement. <laughs> because folks that that reach for retirement, that's it's like ah, oh, I'm on a fixed income. You was always on a fixed income. <laughs> You are just older now. Being 70 year, year, years old, trying to find work. Crazy. You, you never thought that would happen. Crazy. Crazy. I, I, I just want to encourage those to, uh, in particular. Now, those who don't know their fathers I would I would pray about that and may the Lord provoke you to get you on the right path because I, I think it is imperative for you to be a productive reasonable citizen if your father is still alive you need to know who he is what he's about it doesn't matter how disinterested you are. No, life has a way of putting us together. Life has a way of putting us all together. If your father is deceased, I would still be provoked to find out stories about him. Reliable, trusted sources. See, a part of the reason why I do these videos is that I have a very extensive library. So I don't ever want anybody to say, oh, I wonder what he thought about so-and-so. That's why on the Google dashboard it says publish. <laughs> this is publishing. This is New Age Publishing. So, yeah. Our, our generation, our, our prosperity is, is locked up in the cooperation of generations. Cooperation of generations. Because you could be the generation that, that, that produces, have high demand and all this other stuff. But what happens when uh, you, you 
you leave this life and your children for your, your life work what then so all right I'll, I'll, I'll end this video we'll, we'll cap this off at, at an hour Let, let's end this in prayer dear Heavenly Father I, I thank you Lord I, I, I'm asking you Lord to use these words that it may provoke my sister provoke my uh, brother to get to know their origins better than what they know now. Lord, I'm asking for future cooperation from uh, the parents. They may be elderly, they may be, they may be sickly, whatever it is, whatever it takes, Lord, bring us together because we all have a fight to fight, Lord, and we need help. We need help, Father. We, we never know exactly where the answer is but when we start asking the right questions I know that doors begin to open up Lord. and we ask this thing of you in Jesus name we pray Amen alright you have, have a good evening and, and I'll see you in a little bit take care God bless bye